After eight days of parliament, when there has been a complete paralysis of business, given the fact that the opposition wants the prime minister's presence in parliament, I'm joined by finance minister Arun Jaitley joining me live on News Hour Direct this evening. Good evening, Mr. Jaitley. Welcome to the News Hour. Mr. Jaitley, cash crunch is the report that is, uh, that is what we are getting from various parts of the country and banks are saying that uh, only 25% of the available demand for uh, cash is what is uh, available at this moment. Do you think this is a serious uh, problem that you are facing in the implementation of the demonetization drive launched by you on 8th of November? Well, after the high currency notes of 500 and 1000 ceased to be a valid legal tender, that currency gets uh, in a calibrated manner removed from the market. It was exempted in a certain categories. Now the exemptions are being calibrated and slowly brought down. At the same time, in a calibrated manner, the remonetization process is on. And as the Prime Minister said in the very beginning when he announced the decision on the 8th of November, that this process will continue till the end of December, where we are now rebuilding the currency system by a remonetized currency. Now, the Reserve Bank has a particular schedule at hand, and on that schedule, that there is a certain level of currency that they release in the market. Now, of course, uh, of when the 10th of November the banks reopened, you saw long queues, and slowly it took about a week, 10 days for those queues to disappear. The government and the Reserve Bank have been reacting to the market realities on almost a daily basis. And that's why we take certain decisions at what to continue and what not to continue. I think the problem is slowly sorting itself out. Today we are on the 25th of November. You've had about 15 or 16 days uh, uh, after the decision was being implemented. And on each working bank day, through the banking system, you have a remonetization process which is on. Now other agencies are joining in. The petrol pumps have joined in. Some super bazaars have joined in. Mm -hmm. And I think this process will continue. As more and more currency on a daily basis penetrates into the market, I can only assure you that the Reserve Bank has an adequate amount of stock that had been already printed. A large amount of it is being printed by the day. And now gradually more and more 500 rupee notes will also be offloaded into the market through the banking system. And as each day passes by, the situation will normalize further. Mr. Jaitley, let me ask you a question on the common problems that people face. Currency shortage, you said, will ease out. But the fact is, in rural areas where the supply of currency was a little less, will that affect the rural people who now will have to go to an RBI outlet to exchange their 500 and 1000 rupee notes because you've stopped those exchange process in the outlets of banks. Will that create some sort of a problem once again in the rural areas just when we saw it sorting itself out in urban Absolutely areas? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, no, absolutely not. You see, you had an exchange system which was announced in the initial stages. After the first three or four days, the exchange system was being grossly misused. As we saw in certain queues, people were being hired to stand in queues and then exchange the currency. So when the indelible ink uh, uh, strategy was adopted by the government, you immediately overnight saw the queues disappeared, which only established the fact that a large number of people standing in the queues were genuine and equally large number of people were just hired to stand in queues so that they could convert uh, their money unlawfully. That is on behalf of somebody else. Now, even though uh, uh, the exchange system has been stopped because we've seen from a peak of almost 7,000 crores being exchanged every day across the country, that figure had been gradually coming down. And in the last three, four days, it had become almost negligible, which goes on to show that poor people, lower middle classes, middle classes had all exchanged their, most of them had exchanged their currencies. And therefore, if you are in a remote village, you don't have to go to an RBI office. You can go to the nearest bank. In every village, we are now having a system of mobile ATMs which are coming, where you can, people can withdraw from the ATM. You are having bank correspondents who are physically going to each village. So today, what is the setup? You have a setup where you can deposit money in a bank. You have 1,25,000 branches. 
you get deposit money that if you have any remote uh, 1000 rupee note left you need not exchange it you can deposit it in one of the 1 lakh 55000 post offices you can give it to any of the 86000 uh, 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 banking correspondents and out of 2 lakh uh, uh, atms you have a very large number of atms which are uh, overwhelmingly large which are functioning where of course the exchange is not a facility where you which is meant for drawing uh, the currency so in a remote village you can go to a bank close by you don't have to go to an rbi office you can go to a banking correspondent who visits your village and exchange uh, and and deposit it with him and then withdraw through the normal banking system okay uh, uh, mr jetley the question also is being raised about the 500 rupee note that has been introduced apparently there are two types of 500 rupee notes which have come into the market and the rbi's explanation is that they were in a rush so some discrepancies in the batches has come across is that an acceptable argument you see that 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 does not make any difference as far as the holder of the notice is concerned both are valid legally ten legal tenders and therefore as long as they have the security features and the signatures of the reserve bank governor both are authorized currencies of the reserve bank of india both are a valid tender it does not and it's not an issue that concern concerns the holder of that currency Uh, Mr Jaitley the other uh, issue that has been raised by several uh, opposition parties as well is the fact that where there are labor intensive uh, uh, industries uh, the seventh of every month is the payday where most payments are made by cash are we going to be in a position by the 7th of december uh, to overcome the payday issues that you experience and uh, are you thinking that at that point everything will become a check or a uh, uh, plastic transfer uh, will that be possible in the next 12 to 13 days well i think uh, in the larger interest of the workmen the employees in the larger interest of the economy and in the largest interest of ethics it is this precise practice that we want to end what is happening today that workmen are not being paid the minimum wages and because you were paying them in cash there was no record which was verifiable which was authentic as far as the cash is concerned the moment you make a digital transfer or you make a check payment it is authentically established whether the workmen were being paid minimum wages or not now this is a lame or a sham excuse which is being raised by certain industries and the government is extremely particular that slowly each industry must shift over to payment either in the digital mode you have an overwhelmingly large number of people in india who have the janadhan accounts if not the regular accounts and if there is any industry which where workmen do not have an account we are willing to send either the bank manager or the banking correspondent there to open the accounts of the workmen immediately we will co- we are coordinating with the banks for instance amul was paying payment to all the, the people in gujarat from whom they uh, procured milk by cash we made it very clear to them that it has to be done through the digital mode or otherwise they have overnight done it now why can't it happen to the, I, the jute industry has done it amul has done it the others will also do it and the moment you start paying by a digital mode or a, a regular uh, uh, alternative currency mode you can also check whether minimum wages are being paid to the workmen or not and i think this whole practice of paying people by cash is a practice which must come to an end there was a there was a, a time where government employees used to be paid by cash school teachers used to be paid by cash and used to get a signature on some other amount why must we not form uh, switch over to an authentic system which is more reliable and therefore why must we insist on reliance on paying on mm-hmm. a board where the chances of abuse right. are abnormally high right mr jetley uh, you've answered uh, some of the implementation issues that have been raised by various people but let me turn to the political side of this entire demonetization drive the uh, side that you are actually facing in parliament some credit rating agencies and even former prime minister dr manmohan singh has uh, clearly said that in the short run there could be a drop in economic growth the gdp growth could fall by up to 2% do you actually agree with that point of view well let me first of all make it very clear that uh, we are trying to transform india we are trying to change the new normal in india now obviously when people were buying property 
and the, and you were told by the seller or the property agent that so much will be paid in cash and so much will be paid by check it was a very cozy arrangement there is a disruption caused when you change the arrangement and say well everything must be paid in check cash will no longer be available when you are paying your employee amount x by cash and making him sign on some other figure as was happening in the case of school teachers it was a very cozy relationship when in a wholesale retail trade you were saying so much will be in the kacha and the so much will be in the pakka khata this was a very cozy arrangement obviously when you switch over to a different system in the short run there will be some disruption this will be caused in the short run there will be an inconvenience cost but when we are talking in terms of the short run we are talking in terms of the next few weeks when the entire remonetization process is on the moment the remonetization process is completed that is the alternate currency replacement takes place you will have a much bigger gdp you will have a cleaner gdp you will have more reasonable interest rates you will have a better lending as far as banks are concerned a cheaper lending as far as banks are concerned you will have a higher taxation collection now merely because there is a short term inconvenience which i deeply regret that doesn't mean that you can never change or grow dr manmohan singh rightly mentioned yesterday that in the long run we'll be all dead yes of course we'll be all dead but when we get an opportunity to be in government are we only to think about our own generation the country will live on even when we are all dead and therefore what is the legacy for that country which we are going to leave behind 2004 to 2014 they didn't want to take any decisions and therefore they had a terrible legacy that they left behind but the present prime minister doesn't want to leave behind a legacy of a do nothing approach or a policy paralysis he's taken a very courageous decision in which he wants to transform india and even in the long run as i said quoting from what dr manmohan singh said if in the long run we are all dead the country will live on and are we going to leave behind a better country or are we going to leave behind the status quo which was the indian normal so much in cash and so much in check of course that's the status quo which the present prime minister has sought to reject uh, but mr arun jaitley staying with what uh, former prime minister dr manmohan singh said he also said that this is organized loot legalized plunder and a monumental management failure strong words coming in from the former prime minister something that he has not done too much in the past well let me tell you uh, i would contest each one of them and i would contest each one of them because when the 2g scandal took place the congress leaders did not find it an organized loot and plunder when the commonwealth scandal and the coal blocks were auctioned to and given to their own favorites and we saw crony capitalism at its worst that was organized loot and plunder what are we trying to do we are trying to transform india's economy where there is a premium on honesty where the normal status quo of corruption of dubious political funding of bribery of money is being used in terrorism we switch over from a system which promotes it into a more ethical system which many developed economies in the world have followed when we are trying to transform into that system the transformation to a more honest system is being called the loot and the kind of regime we saw between 2004 and 2014 is being called the indian normal i think this is a hypothesis i completely reject as far as management is concerned let me tell you it was a very courageous decision to take you had to have in advance a substantial amount of currency which was printed you had to have the decision kept in absolute secrecy you had to be in readiness with a 24 hour break to be able to implement the decision through the banking system and various other post offices and other channels and therefore you have over a matter of a few weeks attempted to replace the currency in what is probably the largest ever currency replacement exercise in the world and you've done it so far significantly with some inconvenience but without a social unrest as far as the rural sector is concerned let me tell you the rabi sowing is on and the rabi sowing figures this year are better than last year 
and therefore the rural sector also in due course will have a substantial amount of resources which are available to them and that's what the government has organized and therefore we need not have any worry on that count. Uh, uh, Mr. Jaitley, the leader of opposition Gulam Nabi Azad and also BSP chief Mayawati today took objection to the Prime Minister speaking outside Parliament and even alluding to the fact that the entire opposition had really been supporting black money or had something to do with black money and they've asked for the apology of the Prime Minister on this. Do you think this is a valid demand coming in from the opposition who's been demanding the presence of the Prime Minister I in think, the Parliament? I think you see, they are the opposition with utmost respect to them are looking for excuses. They started the debate on day one. We agreed to participate in the debate. We welcomed the debate. At night, they changed strategy and said we won't allow a debate till the prime minister participates in the debate. Yesterday, I made it clear that all right, the prime minister will also participate in the debate. And then they said, oh, why is he not present at this particular time and he's present at this time? Now, are these grounds on which you want to defer the parliamentary functioning? I think the opposition on Monday has organized an akrosh divas. The people are happy. The government is busy implementing. And the opposition is living with some kind of a manufactured and a put on akrosh. And therefore, they want akrosh to be over and then probably continue the debate. If that's the reality, so be it. Yesterday, I had made it clear the very moment that we can start the debate. And I had expressed an apprehension that I had a fear that they don't want the parliament to continue. And my apprehensions have been proved right. Now, you can make worst charges against the government. Now, the government uh, uh, to respond must apologize if it responds to you. This is, uh, in the game of politics, you are entitled to use any kind of phraseology that you want. You can jump into the well and raise slogans against the Prime Minister, but we are gagged from raising slogans in support. This can't be the rule of politics in India. Mr. JT, Rahul Gandhi says the Prime Minister should sit through every de uh, debate, every speaker who is participating in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. And he says, uh, you know, through that debate, uh, there could be a consensus. And that's something that you demanded when you were leader of opposition in the Rajya Sabha uh, before 2014. You actually demanded the, the then Prime Minister's presence to reply on the well, Colgate, the normal uh, you know, scam issue. And you said disruption of parliament is legitimate process of expression of in a democracy. Is the shoe pinching when it's of on your course. foot? Of course. No, of course. You see, we did demand that the prime minister must participate in a debate. The opposition is entitled to demand that. And we've responded to that by saying, yes, the prime minister will demand. It's never been our demand that if there is a 15-hour debate going on, the prime minister must be simultaneously present for 15 hours in both houses of parliament, continue to meet foreign uh, governments, continue to tour the country because of his uh, uh, engagements. The country is a very vast country. The prime minister is the head of the country. He has hundreds and hundreds of obligations. And therefore, the prime minister is entitled to participate in a debate, sit in the house for a reasonable amount of time, but Prime Ministers don't sit for the entire 15 hours in both houses of parliament because they have other functions to discharge. And as far as Mr. Rahul Gandhi is concerned, I would ask him to check his own track record as far as parliamentary attendance and the amount of time that he has spent in parliament before making a comment of this kind. Mr. Jaitley, the other question also raised by the opposition is the fact that the RBI governor Urjit Patel hasn't spoken. And it is in fact his signature that you see on 2000 rupee notes. If this exercise was going on for six to eight months, why is the earlier RBI governor's signature non on the two th not on the 2000 rupee notes? Is this uh, something that the RBI governor himself was opposed to? I think this Has is... this uh, decision been imposed upon the RBI? These are questions raised by the opposition outside parliament. Well, uh, well, if you have, if you have a currency being released on the 10th of November, you can't have the signature of a governor who had retired few months earlier on that currency. Obviously, you will have the uh, signature of the governor who's there on the date of the release of the currency. You can't have a former governor's uh, name on a currency which is being released in the month of November. I can't understand what this objection is all about. But as far as speaking is concerned, it's always an individual prerogative. You see, people in high offices have an option uh, because they have responsibilities to act. They have to lay down policy. 
they have to implement that policy and therefore they speak when there is a necessity to speak each one speaks out of his own preference and i think if the present government uh, governor has his own preferences on want to speak we are to judge him by his actions not by the number of times he appears on your channel uh, mr jetty are you surprised with the fact that one hand you see sharad yadav of the janta dal united uh, hobnobbing with mamta banerji who wants a roll back in the entire demonetization drive on the other hand we have nitish kumar the chief minister of bihar who actually supports the prime minister in the demonetization decision that he has taken is the opposition somewhat <coughs> confused on this entire issue I on think, how I far so to take the opposition and disruption in parliament all i will say is that some chief ministers have taken a very positive attitude to this they are entitled to make their comments on implementation they are entitled to bring concerns of the people to the notice of the central government that concerns as far as their states are concerned should be addressed but i have seen the telangana chief minister the andhra pradesh chief minister the orissa chief minister mr navin patnaik the bihar chief minister they've taken a very positive approach and i hope chief ministers of other political parties of also realize this after all what are we doing we are from a more dubious system trying to switch over to a more ethical system and in politics there has rarely been a debate of this kind where switching over from a dubious system to an ethical system is considered to be a, 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 a highly improper Lastly Mr Jaitley do you think the akrosh divas that is being planned by the opposition for Monday 28th of November is a result of an ego battle between the treasury benches and the opposition benches do you think we will see any action on this issue in parliament well, think, after akrosh divas I think there is there is a disconnect I think there is a disconnect between the some of the opposition and the people of India and when I say this the people have changed some politicians have refused to recognize that change for instance i heard an argument in the rajya sabha how will people transform into a plastic currency it won't it will take a huge amount of time now if in the year 2000 we had said that every poor man in india can carry a mobile nobody would have believed us but today that's a reality Yesterday I had a conference with the chairpersons of various banks both public and private sector banks and I was surprised at the figure that both in terms of uh, using the mobile technology as also the debit cards and the credit cards and the e wallets of all kind through the digital mode both through the pos machines as also the mobile phones there are 80 crore cards in circulation in india of which 40 crores are in actual use and they determine the actual use by the number of people who use them either on post machines or on the atms now the to some in parliament it may appear to be a far cry but if you actually see the reality at the ground level india is changing we are trying to catalyze that change and therefore I see no reason to have this uh, put on anger or a put on akrosh against this change which is an ethical change which is a change for a better and which is a change for a better India. Well on that note uh, well, thank you very much for joining us uh, Mr Arun Jaitley we do hope there is a meaningful debate on the floor of parliament because uh, the cat catalyst that you are providing for change in India is something that needs to be debated and discussed by every political party and every representative of the people who has been voted to power to represent them in parliament will that happen next week we'll wait to see thank you very much Mr Arun Jaitley